Recently, the United States decided it was a good idea to start scanning through people's clothes and checking for bombs and weapons in their underwear. I figured if it was good enough for the government, it's good enough for me. So I set out to find a way to use microwaves to peer through clothing. I haven't found a way to do it at a distance, but I have found a way that I can do it like the old optical hand scanners from back in the 90s. I started with the feed horn off of a mini satellite dish. I need to say right now that I won't be able to help you guys with every variant of feed horn out there. There's so many of them. You'll just have to explore and experiment and figure it out just like I did. These are so inexpensive that you can break them over and over again with no problem. This one cost me $3.25 and I got an LED calculator with it too. This is what it looks like inside. This one has three feed horns and two local oscillators. I removed the cover off of one of the feed horn sections, exposing the two antennas for the left and right polarization, and the DRO oscillator. Follow this link if you want to learn more about this type of oscillator. On the back side of the board, you can see that there's two rigid coax connections between the DRO and two of the feed horns. Knowing this was handy so I could tie into the 10 GHz oscillator easily. These LNBs have circular polarization, which doesn't make much difference in this project, but is interesting nonetheless. If you look down inside, you can see there's a stair-step septum that guides the waves as they enter and separates them left to right. When the satellite transmits its signal, it can transmit the signal in a way such that the wave travels in a corkscrew, either left or right hand. At the back of the feed horn, there's two antenna. The waves travel down the feed horn, rotating as they pass through, hitting the septum, which divides them into the two different polarizations. They do this so that they can transmit two signals at the same frequency, doubling the bandwidth. This is approximately what the circuit looks like in the LNB. There's two symmetrical circuits, one for each polarization, and both of them are fed by the local oscillator that comes in through the coax. The down-converted signal is passed out of the metal cover and into two DC blocking capacitors. That's where we're going to tap our signal off. We need to convert one of the receiving sides into a transmitting side. This is going to require some cutting of traces and rotating the transistors so that their gates are pointing the opposite direction. The draining gate has some circuitry associated with it that biases them correctly, so these need to be crisscrossed when we flip the transistor around. This is approximately what it should look like when you're done. The transistors have been rotated 180 degrees so the gate is pointed towards the right side, and the wires are crisscrossing between the drain and the, the original gate circuit and the local oscillator is connected to the last transistor there through a 47 picofarad capacitor. This isn't exactly the best microwave design technique, so your results may vary. Next, I wired up some power connections to the coax connector coming into the LNB. This is typically fed by the set-top box. Then I attached a coax to the DC blocking capacitor on the receiving side, as I mentioned earlier. And now the LNB is done. Let's look at the system diagram. So we have the feed horn with a low-noise amplifier and our reverse to amplifier transmitting. It's received and mixed, and then it goes to an instrumentation amplifier by analog devices. This device replaces about three op amps and has a gain of one to 10,000, which is very handy. The amplified signal goes into an analog to digital converter by microchip, and then fed into an Altera FPGA, which has a frame buffer, a VGA controller, an I squared C controller, and a PS2 controller. And lastly, an optical mouse to give us our XY location. I'll record a supplemental video about the overall system and the FPGA design. I'll put a link at the end of the video when that's available. A little hot glue and we're ready to go. The mouse is attached to the side of the feed horn and all you have to do is wave it back and forth to start scanning. For our first test subject, it's going to be an aluminum hand under this piece of particle board. Our penetration depth is only a few centimeters. This is plenty to go through clothing. Unfortunately, you have to find a way to move this evenly across the surface. I'm going to speed this up. Since we know the X and Y position, it's okay to go over the same location multiple times. And there we have it. One tinfoil hand. All right, let's see if this is okay for human flesh. Yep, that worked just fine, although my hand wasn't very centered there. I'm not an alien. I have more than three fingers. All right, here's the limitations. It doesn't have much penetration depth. The depth is going to be a little bit muddled because of the continuous wave phase relationship. The resolution is going to be poor because of the long wavelength. 
and it's a little difficult to wave this thing around and keep the mouse so that it doesn't lose track of its position. Next! As you wish. What's this? And this! Oh. Just go ahead and try to contact Jerry. She's not going to be able to get you out of this. What are you, some kind of hacker?